Sarazan Mai is the latest work of Kunihiko Ikuhara, a man whose directorial works seem to increasingly escalate in insanity as he churns them out. A man whose works are known for their dramatic poses, wacky animal hijinks, and surreal imagery. Kunihiko Ikuhara is the man responsible for Revolutionary Girl Utena, Mawaru Penguin Drum, Yurikuma Arashi, and now Sarazan Mai. Sarazan Mai is all about the theme of desire, the secrets that you keep to yourself that you don't want the world to know, the darkest parts of your personality that cannot, no, must not be exposed to the world. But as much as this show is about desire, it's about connection. With each member of the cast at some point describing that they're isolated from society, not to mention that the villains they fight each episode up to now are all individuals who have let their desires take over their lives and have been turned into Kappa zombies by Mabu and Rayo that fully encompass those desires. Wikipedia says this about Kappa. They are sometimes said to take their victims for the purpose of drinking their blood, eating their livers, or gaining power by taking their Shiriko Dama, a mythical ball said to contain the soul, which is located inside the anus. Kappa are all over Sarazan Mai. As you very well may be aware, our three main characters are transformed into Kappa by that very dubious method, you know, of having it taken a... Uh, extracted from their anus. The fact that they've turned into Kappa by having their Shiriko Dama removed is a callback to many folk tales featuring Kappa doing that to their unsuspecting victims. Nice, someone is now mowing their lawn or something. <clears throat> There's no way it, it, this isn't gonna show up on the fucking recording. Fucking Christ. I'm gonna have to edit this shit. So the boys have like a weird anal bead looking attack which is what they use to extract Shiriko Dama from their enemies. Uh, dot dot dot. A successful Sarazan Mai requires the boys to uh, basically look into each other's embarrassing secrets. So basically every time they do this, somebody's secrets get uh, embarrassed. Like, you know, there's like, oh, um, Enta kissed Kazuki while he was sleeping. Gay! And then there's also like, um, hey, uh... Toei killed a whole man. He did that. He shot a guy, right? You know? Um, yeah. That's, uh, secrets like that, basically. There's a couple, you know? I think there's one every episode. Did, have I explained- Have I explained what- What Sarazan Mai is, by the way, or what the story is about? So, Sarazan Mai is about three boys who basically want to protect the shit that they love. They're, uh, they're all turned into Kappas by a Kappa dude named, uh, Kepi. And he is, a, uh, you know, and basically they have powers and they fucking extract desires from people. And, uh, it's real cool and epic. All the boys are participating in the plot in order to protect what they value the most. Kazuki is trying to give Haruka the life and happiness that he feels responsible for taking away from him. Because his desire to be with his real mother got Haruka hurt and unable to use his legs. Toei wants to protect the soba shop his late parents left him, and likely wants to use the dish to somehow get him and his brother out of the crappy situation that they're currently in. Enta wants to make Kazuki happy because he loves him, and he wants to he wants to keep running with Kazuki, which is why he wants to get Kazuki back on the soccer team, which is probably what he's gonna use his uh, golden plate wish for to reunite the golden duo that they used to be when they were on the soccer team and good at sports. Imagine that. Blech. Many of the characters have some interesting color motifs such as Kazuki is red. Red is a color that is linked with feelings of excitement and intensity, which fits Kazuki quite well considering throughout most of the show you see how most of the emotions he expresses are extremely intense, period. A shining example of that is when he tries to give himself up without a moment of hesitation to bring his brother back in exchange of being removed from history and forgotten as a whole because he believes that because it will reverse Haruka's accident, he was just totally fine with just jumping and like letting it all go. When there were other options and like Haruka didn't even die in that way, so that would have just been kind of fucked up and like dumb. 
for him to have done that but you know he gets saved because uh our boy Anta pulls out the gat you know shoot shit pretty sick he waited till after he jumped to fucking shoot shit though to pull it out just saying okay, red is also linked with feelings of anger or passion which is also quite clear kazuki is angry at himself and blames himself for haruka's accident and afterwards he is committed to making haruka happy to the extent of quitting his his passion soccer in order to fully commit to haruka's happiness also red typically signifies the leader and while kazuki is is certainly the closest thing to a main character if not clearly the leader of the kappa boy gang Toei is blue. Linked with feelings of calmness, melancholy, and manliness, Toei being the most hard-edged character of the three, with some of the most morally black scenes in the series, aka the most black-pilled character, Toei sells weed, willingly waterboards people, and even straight up killed the dude. Toei best boy, by the way. While also being the most calm and, dare I say it, strategic of the Kappa Task Force. He's also been known to come through with the gat, which is just another reason why he's the greatest. Enta is yellow. Yellow is cheery and warm, which is how Enta appears near the beginning of the series. Almost as the most innocent and with the least baggage of the Kappa Sentai. Yellow is also linked with frustration, fear, and cowardice, which as you learn more about him describes Enta more and more as the series goes on. As he's frustrated with Katsuki's leaving the soccer team and breaking their golden duo, Enta has been trying to get Katsuki to remember how happy they were on the soccer team and spends most of the, the show go getting flashbacks and hallucinations of his totally gay relationship with Katsuki. For time's sake, I'll move, I'll move a bit quicker through these. Okay, Kepi is green, C, nature. Rayo is black, impure. Black is associated with evil. Mabu is white. White is purity and innocence. Mabu is protected by Rayo for reasons I don't fully want to get into, but basically Mabu lost his emotions and love because of plot reasons, leaving Rayo to endlessly create Kappa Zoms to keep Mabu alive. AKA Rayo is Hamura. Hashtag Rayo is suffering. And lastly, Sara is purple. Purple is royalty and wealth alongside spirituality and exoticism, which uh, I think pretty much sums up her. Anyway, the music in Sara's on my is fantastic and well voiced, not to mention super catchy, enough enough so that I'm completely fine watching, if not dancing along, basically the same dance sequences every single episode. Although there wasn't a cop dance in episode 6, sad face. The OP is lovely and is a favorite that I wouldn't dare skip because it just puts you in the perfect mood to watch the show. The animation in the show is absolutely phenomenal with beautiful sakuga cuts such as Kepi sucking the souls out of each of the boys butts. <laughs> with the performances by Mabu and Rayo taking the cake over everything else in the show to consistently get me hyped to sing and dance along as I force my weak wee body to do the same dance moves in hopes to absorb some of the pure coolness swagger, swagger if you will <laughs> that Mabu and Rayo radiate. By the way, Mabu and Rayo have a Twitter account that you can follow that's at KeepOnlyOneLove. Speaking of Twitter, I also have one and you can follow me on Twitter.com at AllahIsSuffering. Anyway guys, that's about all I have to say about Sarah's on my. Subscribe if you liked. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Now